Teleporters, teleporters. Okay, teleporters, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I stare at the watermark, a menaced, petty man, besotted by pseudo-events, an inert man. The weekend cat sits greying in the window, training years for a redundant profession, thoughts trailing off, the watermarks remain odd, imposed. The weekend cat stares at the watermark.
horse faces, faces like horses, and grey streets where old men wail unnoticed, prayers to an ignoble god. There the butcher's shop stinks to the leaden sky. There the fish shop stinks differently but worse. But where are they, the cool arms, white as alabaster? Loathsome London, violent stinking hole. I was very aware of that mobile I stare at the watermark. Enslaved to a system, much like a prison, I stare at the system inside the blizzard. A good day would be not to see the mystic comedian 
or the TV, or the extra girlfriend he has, or the editor of the local paper, or Bourne Road, or the mitre landlord, or the infamous lodger, or the fabulous wines manager, or the main character. Farmers swirl around the paddock. The cow wobbles past the farmer agog. Hamish swills around the driveway, covered in muck and porridge, all but given up on white collar pen pal, whose apartment overlooks Ipswich. Standing, pondering my fate, I was goofed by the plumber's mate. I have a Melton Mowbray mindset. Hamish sits placid with the pigs and ducks and straw, smearing muck on the neighbours' windows. Mother has a cup of cider to pour over father, who shone his torch at pornographic photos. I wish I was a chilled out dude.
up and some light for clothes. Goes to Sanderson's department shop to meet Bambo. Goes to shops to see the shop where he works when it isn't his day off. Bombard's dog pisses on his leg outside centre. War of words with Ormrod, the local Swedish hard man who plays soft soul music loud at night. Blaring out of his car and has sex at night in the middle of the street in a telemarketing headset. It's how he made his fortune. Goes home, goes to room and doesn't come out again. Day two, needs to pay bills, etc. Speaks to bank manager naked on the telephone. Develops thought impediments halfway through telephone, the telephone call. And speech becomes slurred and confused. Goes to pub to meet Bambo. Gets drunk, goes home. Day three, hung over again. Work. Leaves work early with chest complaint. Goes straight to pub. Offers his father a job in fictional rock stadium. perfectly sober. God damn my name. for my enormous fear was I had already sinned against the Omrods in the past when they'd held a sex party in the road a few weeks after I'd moved in opposite. Toby Omrod and his big boisterous gang covered my door in mint sauce and used car salesmen we're having a sex party in the middle of the road outside our house. They're all wearing those headset type things to make you look like you're working at an airport control tower or talking to yourself.
You shouldn't be having sex out here, I said, marching up to them. Apparently they had made their fortune from telephone marketing, and now their crew were notorious around the town, driving around in Swedish cars. The main ringleader was Toby, a huge hulking man who wore a large purple suit every day. He had one of those vacant glares that told only of potential harm. I subsequently, subsequently learnt the fate of a man known as Crafty Sai. As I look at you now, I feel that same amazement and awe that keeps me from clasping your knees, though terrible are the things that have happened to me. I'll be a hotelier till the end of the year.